out a little bit of voice issues here, but you should still be able to um, kind of make out what I'm talking about. I thought it may be helpful for some of you who are still seem to be struggling a bit with this idea of the claim to sort of review it, maybe using a different example. Maybe this will help a little bit for you. Um, so remember in English 111 when you wrote thesis statements? Well, that's what you're doing now. That's what a claim is. It's a thesis statement for an argument. So your task in college writing is not to pare it back what you've been told. Um, it's not to write reports, although sometimes you will write reports, but for the most part you're being asked to write argumentative um, essays. So you're, you're making a claim about something. You're arguing that your point is um, new or valid or different. Um, and then, of course, you spend the rest of the essay supporting that. Um, so you're, you're telling us either something new or arguing a point we may not have thought of before. So a claim is not obvious, um, or I'm using here a kind of facetious argument about the sky being blue. The sky appears blue to us. All right. That's just a fact. That's just a statement. Once you've told me that, there's nothing else you can do in your essay except for tell us why it appears blue. That's just science. We, we already know that, right? What if, though, you were doing some experimentation, you're in a science class, and you say, wait a second, it appears to me that um, sometime in the near future, instead of appearing blue, the sky's going to appear green. Well, that's an argument. You're claiming something that um, other people may not believe. You're going to have to persuade them that your claim is correct, and you would do so by doing your research and finding support to prove your claim. All right? So, this first, for this first paper, you've been tasked with developing three different kinds of claims. That's an, um, the activity one, right? Where you're coming up with a definition claim, an evaluation claim, and a comparison claim about your film or art monster. Then you're choosing one of those, and most of you might have done this backwards because your claim was due first and the rest is just for practice. But you'll choose one of those claims to be the basis for your essay that's due next week. So let's let's kind of review those claim types again um, using um, werewolves this time. Um, notice a lot of students don't write about werewolves, so this, this is a good topic to use. And I have here just some images of werewolves, just in case there are folks out there who don't know what a werewolf <laughs> looks like. Um, right? I don't want to make any assumptions. Not everybody likes um, monster movies. So let's start with definition. There are lots of ways to write definitions, um, particularly in science writing, um, philosophy. You'll do a lot more with the definition. I've asked you to do one particular kind that seems to work best in writing about humanity as types, topics. What is the function of your monster? All right. A definition is not a description. There are times to describe your, um, your, your terms in, in an essay. Um, or there are lots of reasons that you would find it necessary to define terms to make sure everybody's on the same page so you're going to describe things. Um, and even in uh, this essay, you do have a background paragraph where you're going to describe your monster for us, right? And that's great, but that's nothing you can argue. So here I've got in red a sample claim, the werewolf in the 1981 film, An American Werewolf in London. So in your claim, you want to tell us about the monster you're talking about and the, the film it comes from, or the artwork. Uh, the green man sample I have is an artwork. This one's a film. So you have one of both. The werewolf in the 1981 film, An American Werewolf in London, howls at the moon, turns into a werewolf, and the moon is full and attacks people. Well, great. Now we have a great description of a monster, a kind of monster or werewolf. This is nothing I can write an essay about. This is just common knowledge about werewolves, right? So there's nothing here that would help me write an argumentative paper. Not to say the sentence isn't useful somewhere, probably in our background paragraph, or maybe um, leading up to our claim in the introduction, but it is not a claim because it is not arguing anything. Um, and particularly, it's not arguing a function. Right, which is what you've been specifically tasked with doing. So a, a, a claim that might work, and I've made this up, it, this may not be true at all, but that would be my problem for the rest of the paper is to prove this, right? 
Um, the werewolf in the 1981 film, again looking here in red, the werewolf in the 1981 film in American Werewolf in London functions, hey, I even used the word functions, right, to make it clear that what I'm doing is to be defining my werewolf in terms of its function. It functions as a commentary on the wild beast inside civilized man. That's an argument. How do I know that's an argument? Because not everybody is going to agree with me. They're not going to agree necessarily with this assessment of what the function of the werewolf is. They might think the function is um, to, um, I don't know, talk about scientific exploration or talk about the different kinds of people and how they're not accepted, right? It, it could be, it could function as a bunch of different things, but I've chose that it's a commentary on the wild beast inside of civilized man, and now I have to spend the rest of my essay supporting that. So I'm going to stop here and then do a second uh, video on evaluation and comparison, um, one or two more, depending on how long it takes, because these videos will upload faster if they're short.